Hi, my name is Amin. I'm a graduate student at Columbia University, and uh, today I'm going to present uh, my accepted paper in WACD 2021 titled Neuron Matching in, in C Elegance with Robust Approximate Linear Regression Without uh, Correspondence. So to give you a quick bit of background, um, here is why we're interested in solving this problem. So uh, C elegance is a, is a transparent worm uh, with 302 neurons uh, in its nervous system. Uh, its whole uh, uh, connectome is known. So the connectivity between the neurons inside the, inside the nervous system and its whole genome is sequenced. Moreover, it also uh, possesses a rich behavioral repertoire. And, and these are the reasons that people in, in neuroscience are really interested in, uh, in studying this animal for various uh, reasons, including but not limited to developmental research as well as disease and translational research, and also cell level and systems and circuit level research trying to understand uh, how the activity of the neurons inside the C. elegans gives rise to its behavior. So one of the current uh, bottlenecks in, in analysis of, of, the, of the images of C. elegans is that uh, once we take these images, uh, uh, you're interested in, in registering this image onto a, an atlas of neuronal positions. So here um, I'm showing you the, the, the already existing atlas of neuronal positions. And this is an example image that we take from this animal. And we're interested in, in registering and identifying uh, the neur neuronal identities. Um, and um, and this, is a, this is a hard and challenging problem because uh, first of all, the images are noisy and, and uh, we see a lot of bright spots in the image that, uh, that any detection algorithm could uh, potentially identify these as, as, poten as potential neurons. Uh, but, but for example, this, this green spot here, this is not a neuron, this is just a biological artifact that you're not really interested in. So, uh, so this is what we call uh, structured outliers, that the, the outliers are not just uniformly distributed in space, but they have some structure in them. And finally, we, have, we might actually have missing data as well. So there might be some of the neurons that do exist in this atlas, but do not exist in this image. So this is a distinction that we made between uh, outliers and missing data. So here are the four scenarios that I just talked about. So uh, either we have the full correspondences, uh, every point in X has a correspondence in, in one point to, to one point in Y. The case D is uh, where we miss some of the correspondences. So the point set Y does not have some of the points that are, uh, that are in point set X. And, and uh, case C is uh, where we have outliers, uh, meaning that uh, um, there are some points in Y that have correspondences in X, but there are some points that do not have any correspondences. And finally, we have the case of adversarial outliers, meaning that, uh, so here for an example, for, for example, I'm showing um, um, like an image of two worms, for example, if you're interested in registering this atlas onto one of these, uh, one of these point sets. So here I've included a, uh, a very high level summary of the existing methods. There are some methods that are locally optimal, um, which uh, for example, ICP and CPD, um, methods that are based on deep learning approaches. And, um, and I've included some examples here. They, they require training and they do not necessarily provide a globally optimum solution and a random sampling uh, or RANSAC, random sampling consensus approaches, which are specifically designed to deal with outliers um, by instead of uh, registering all the points, registering random, random samples of the points. And, and finally, uh, there are some uh, approaches that are based on branch and bound techniques and they provide globally optimal solutions, um, but, but they are slower than, than the other existing methods. Here I've included, uh, uh, again, just this is just a slide just to show you that there are already a lot of different papers and approaches to deal with this problem. Um, this is what I took from this website, and, and there are tons of papers uh, kind of trying to tackle the similar problem of points and registration uh, in, in, in different scenarios. Um, so, uh, so, our, so our algorithm, um, so in order to kind of provide our algorithm, I first, I'm first going to introduce this one-dimensional case. So imagine that you have uh, two points, this this green point set and this red point set, and the goal is to kind of register and, and there are a bunch of outliers. So the, um, the empty circles are the outliers and the goal is to register the, the red point set onto the green point set. So this is uh, the first algorithm that you're going and that I'm going to present is, uh, is what we call exhaustive approach where we 
just uh, consider for every pair of pairs of points in, in red and green, we consider a correspondence between them and we find the beta based on the ratio. So this is a kind of uh, a hypothetical beta for, for, um, for the case as if this point corresponds to uh, you know, the, one of the points uh, in this other uh, point set. So we find this beta ij based on the ratio of yi and xj, and then we map all the points in the red point cloud to the, uh, to the, to the space of the green point cloud based on this beta ij, and, uh, and uh, we compute the hits. Uh, the hits are the points that end up somewhere close to an existing point in the, in the green point set. Um, so we do this for every pair, and finally we grab the beta ij, which gives us the most number of hits. Um, and then, so we have a position in the, uh, in the paper showing that this algorithm recovers the true beta. So um, the other uh, case, uh, which is a very simple extension of this based on the random sampling consensus idea is to, instead of um, consider all the pairs of points, just consider random samples from, from points at X and Y and compute this hypothetical beta and the hypothetical inliers. Um, based on this new parameter and finally grab the, the beta that gives the best, uh, the, the highest number of inliers. And uh, in, in, in proposition two, we provide um, uh, the, the number uh, of, of, of iterations that we need to run this algorithm in order to recover this beta star, um, an, approximate, uh, an approximation of this, of this uh, beta star. And, um, and um, here we show that uh, as a function of signal to noise ratio on the X axis and as a function of uh, the missing data points on the Y axis, what is the accuracy or the recovery rate of the algorithm? And um, so if the SNR is high or the, uh, there are not a lot of missing data points, the, ac the accuracy of the method is, is, is close to one. Um, and it breaks down as we increase the SNR uh, for the number of missing data points. So in this other plot I'm showing uh, as a function of SNR and the number of outliers um, uh, and, the, and the ratio of outliers, what is the accuracy of the algorithm? And in the right plot, I'm showing the, the accuracy of uh, our proposed algorithm in the exhaustive case and, and two different settings of delta parameter. And, and finally, uh, an already existing ICP, which completely breaks down in this, in this uh, scenario where we have a lot of outliers. We can simply extend this algorithm to high dimensions by just uh, considering D samples instead of one sample, um, because we want to solve for a re regression problem that is a D by D matrix. Um, so um, this extension, for, for this extension, we again provide bounds um, on the number of iterations that we need to run this algorithm to achieve an approximate solution. And, uh, and this is, um, although uh, in, the, in the worst case, it could be exponential, but, uh, uh, but in our experience, we don't need to run it uh, for too many, too many trials to, to get a good approximation. And um, so, so one thing uh, is that we have, uh, we have this new parameter that determines, uh, determines how we call a hit. So this new parameter, uh, I'm showing here that on the x-axis, if we change the new parameter, there's a certain range, which is a reasonable range for, for this new parameter that gives rise to a very good accuracy. Um, so we don't need to have the optimal new, the, the, new, the, uh, the optimal new has, has a range, it's not only one value, and then uh, setting it to a reasonable range, we can, we can hope that we can recover the beta star. So we have included some, some recipe to, uh, to kind of cross-validate this new in the paper. So this is the results of, of, uh, of, of different algorithms. So on A, I'm showing the unregistered point clouds in red and green. B and C correspond to CPD and ICP, and D is our algorithm. And as you can see, our algorithm is better able to recover the, the true uh, beta star. So, um, and, and, um, and here I'm showing uh, the, the, the difference between unstructured versus adversarial outliers. So here, in this case, we're assuming that the, the outliers are distribute it uniformly in space. But in this other plot, you're assuming that the outliers are basically just the body part of this fish that is just copy pasted uh, here uh, in the green point set. And, uh, and in both cases, uh, our algorithm uh, is, is capable, which is, which is represented in B, is better capable to recover uh, the ground truth uh, beta um, um, and not get it stuck in a, in a local, uh, local optimum like this in the adversarial case. We have also included a table include, uh, that, that uh, 
to demonstrate the, the performance of our algorithm compared to other algorithms, including this homomorphic sensing, which is a globally optimal algorithm. And we have shown that for C elegance and fish data sets, uh, we outperform existing approaches. Okay, so in summary, uh, I, what we did in this paper was to introduce the notion of robust regression without correspondence and made the distinction between unstructured and adversarial outliers. And we provided a polynomial algorithm to solve uh, exactly for the one dimensional case and a randomized algorithm to find an approximate solution in the, uh, in the high dimensions, which is better than pure brute force. And we demonstrated a computational neuroscience application of neuron matching in silicon. With that, I would like to thank uh, my co-author, Erdan Varel, who is a postdoc at Columbia University and is on the job market right now, and our funding sources, and my advisor, Jan Peninsky, and the whole lab, as well as you for listening.